Okay, so I know some of you have problem with the MySQL installation, so I'm going to do sorry Windows only first, huh? I don't have a Mac computer here. So installing MySQL starting from beginning. Okay, first of all, you need to find out what's the version of Python on your on your install your Anaconda. To find out to find out the version of your Python you're running, this is the two lines you can run in your notebook to find out the version of Python is you're running. Because if you're doing 3.6 or you're doing 3.7 or your somehow backward 2.7, you need a different connector later on. Okay, so take note of the version here, step one. Okay. So step two is downloading the correct installer. Now because my computer already has everything installed nicely, right? I'm going to launch my virtual machine here. Okay, do I have MSQL? Okay, let me clean my machine out first. Let me we're gonna remove everything here. Uh, because this machine got everything in stock, so you see, so I'm going to remove and then show you from scratch. Oh, this is a test machine. This is a virtual machine. It's not my main PC. This is uh, my, my PC in the PC. Huh? No, you don't get, you don't get this. This is my, my thing. <laughs> okay, let me clean my machine first. So the modern SQL MSQ installation should start with this thing called the installer. Now the old, word, the old, the old way of installing was that you install the server separately, then you download a workbench, you install that separately, then it works. Okay, so now they actually made it simpler by having this one single software called the installer itself. So in the installer, in the installer, what you will encounter in the beginning is that you will try to scan for existing MSQL products on your, on your, on your computer. If you find something, you will show it. If it doesn't, it will immediately ask you to add something. So it's a bit like ordering something on your grab food. Like I want to choose McDonald's, like Happy Meal or Big Mac, and then add, add on fries and stuff like that, right? So it's like, you pay, like choose what you want, add a card, and then click next. Now somewhere along the line, it will probably ask you to execute and download additional things. It's normal. Okay? Because MSQL uh, on the Windows requires some Microsoft products, which normally call be Visual Studio, C++, and something runtime. Okay, so some of those things might also be downloaded and installed. So it's okay if you're being prompted, it's not a virus, it's okay to go ahead and say install it. So I'm going to clean out my this PC and then show from scratch what happens. Waiting for you. <clears throat> okay. Totally clean this thing out first. Uh, normally, I have a virtual machine running in case I need, I need to download some software and, and scan or virus uh, because I can destroy the virtual machine. <coughs> yes. No, you see right. Okay, I show you the the link to download. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you follow the PowerPoint slide, the second link, not the first one, the second link, the first one is probably outdated already. Okay? This one, follow the second link, we say dev.mysql.com slash download slash mysql, you will get to this page. Okay, now the first thing you'll see that it tells you mysql company server 8.0.19, select operating system. I want you to skip that uh, and come down to here. Now look for the installer for Windows, this banner, okay? If you download these two links, it will give you a zip file. There is no exe inside for you to run it. You need to, you need to have extra steps to run the MSQL server from there. So click on this banner. Okay, so now you will see instead of community server, you will see MISQL, MISQL installer 8.0.19. Okay, and then this is the installer, MSI installer, which will be an exe file that we can run. Click on the first link if, because it's 18 by 6 meg, 
after you run it, you will start downloading stuff. The second link will contain most of the things you need already there. So it doesn't matter which one you take. Okay. Yeah, the 500, the um, 300 megabyte. Yeah, yeah. Probably take the second one, second link. One of them. Then inside there, you'll give you options to add the products you want. If you download the zip, you can delete it. It's not so helpful. Okay, remember that your job is not to install and set up databases. <laughs> your job of data analysis is to use it. Okay, so if you know how to set up nicely, it's good. It's an added bonus, but it's not really the needed part of the job scope if you're doing data. For Mac users, you also also <laughs> using Mac, right? That's uh, okay. Mac doesn't use the. Let me see. Does it? What version of Mac OS Mojave? skip to download. For Mac different. They don't use an installer. So for Mac you need so individual server and workbench. So you just skip to the start by right? download right. Mm -hmm. Hey no not MSI. Mm -hmm. No 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 MSI. Okay, so um, is it is it this one? DMG. You should take the DMG. I already installed it. So it's already right? Okay, you install before they go to system preferences. Then go to, go to the system preferences, you'll see a uh, MISQL icon. Is it this one? Yes, this one. Then you click on initialize database. It'll ask you to enter a password for you. Choose the second option so that your password will be the same screen. Then your password can be anything. As long as, oh, as, long as, as, long as it's as long as it's when I set up, I choose the password. So I need to answer. Don't need to just initialize. You need to enter something, you must have a password. So I just enter whatever password Yeah, it can be any password because you're not using the strong password system. So, it's okay. so I just. Okay, you must remember a password. Mm -hmm. If you lose it, you gotta re initialize it. <clears throat> Bye, so so. Okay, then you install the MSL workbench. It's a DMG, DMG also package. Oh, I'm going to install my DMG workbench. My MSL workbench. Yeah. Why so long? Ah, yeah. Download the workbench. Second one. Then choose your DM, the DMG, you should detect your system, but then choose the app. Then you install this one. Then go down. For Mac, you can only do two things. Oh! <laughs> Same problem. 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 Same
Yes. Okay, uh, so many choices. Oh, it's okay. Then next. Yes. The rest are okay, right? Yeah. So I just choose the default. Mm. Okay, we'll just go ahead. Uh. Yeah. yeah. All the files are here. I tried to all the other files over. This one is another one. I even created in uh, Excel and for the site. Also another one. Can you open the file? Nope. Yeah. They asked for authentication method. Mm. Choose the legacy. Legacy. Then enter a password. Oh, see password. Mm. You must, they will force you to enter a password. No but the, the legacy method allows you to enter a weak password. So easy, easy, easy. The strong, the strong password mm -hmm. should require something more complicated. Uh, so your error, right, is... So you're done, you're just... Yeah, you're done. Actually... But the past is so long, don't work. Now I shut the past, it still don't work. So, what is Windows service detail? Just change the slash. Okay, can this one? Okay, then think it's standard, right? Standard, yeah, standard. So then click execute. No, you do it. No, you do it. Execute. Well, didn't you know so many process that can do work? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> like, they ask you so many questions, and you don't know what to choose, right? Because you don't understand what to do. Yeah, so when you do this, you will add a service to your Windows system. So the service is the background running on. The oh, server will run the background. And have it, so you will... So this will... Once you internet, then you can use it. Right? No need. You, do need you, you, do, you don't need the internet or network for to use it. No need the... Support the, the Wi-Fi. Lah. Because oh. it's running locally, so it's okay. Oh, okay. It's just that you will have an extra process running in the background. Okay. Even okay. you don't use it. But you will auto-update all this, right? No, you will not update, will not update until you update it yourself. Okay, that will be another process. Uh, uh. You want to update, you force the update. You cannot, you will not auto, like, Windows I tell you, update, the update, the incoming. So after this is considered done, right? Mm. Okay. But, yeah. I think, but I didn't choose for those. Hmm? Mm. I didn't choose for those, like, mm. one pen, Python, mm. and then for Python. Okay, now you yeah. install yeah. the next item, the whole batch. Okay. One by one. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, but it's okay, it's still quite a bit of time. Uh. Yeah. the data set like that. So by right, it's supposed to have two lines. Mm. So when I go on my Jupiter, when I did yesterday of what you taught us, right, I tried. But I didn't think because of that, it does not come out two lines, but it comes like that. I don't know why. So I... I don't know why. So I'm not sure. Yeah. 
So actually, what yeah, how many? Two only, only one and two. So it's supposed to have two lines. You only choose the two lines here, lah. No, no, no. As, as in, it's supposed to. It's so, uh, uh, the the. Uh, the thing I want to draw is actually a line chart. So it's oh, also like, yeah, that was same, uh, one category is hyper, right. the other category is uh, age. But I don't know. You need to pivot the data. Uh, pivot the data yeah. How to pivot the data? Okay, when you read in this data file, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, the so the, the ideal format is that actually, right, this is one column, mm -hmm. then this is another column here. But but this one I, I, I cannot manipulate this Excel spreadsheet right in, in that sense uh. so that's why oh okay. I, I, I need to you need to manipulate it you need to change it I need to change so if I change it it won't, it won't it. penalize me yeah. no I won't because you need to do it otherwise how you gonna do generate a chart this one we cannot generate a chart oh, okay, okay. you need to transform it no no I spent so much time but I don't have it Okay, <clears throat> my computer has nothing there. <coughs> okay, step one, or step two, after finding out your Python version, go to <coughs> the second link in the PowerPoint, click on the second option because you are you just want to download everything first. Now, if you come to this page, don't register, don't bother register, log in. Just click on the link below. Says no thanks. Start my download. <coughs> and then you will download the file. 300, 400 megabyte. <coughs> huh? Download very fast. Huh? You want to see the link? Okay, so after downloading that, run the file or the executable. This is a MSI file. Maximum 12 people. I count up uh, about 12. Oh. But it's a little bit more. It's still a little bit. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll figure out something else in the chat. Uh, okay, so you will get this problem if your UAC level, your system is enabled to notify you every time something to change the computer. Click yes. And. Okay, wait for this to. The thing will start running. Okay, so you should see this splash image of the installer so when the installer runs start up the first time right because you if you have not installed anything before you will encounter this screen which basically asks you to set up your server now there are a lot of options here like it says developer default server only client only so for you you should choose developer default okay choose the first option that means you basically you don't need to change the option they present to you here they click next so at this point in time, they will start to check requirements. <clears throat> now some of these things actually need like additional uh, in, uh, requirements. So you notice that the requirement column here shows you some stuff like, oh, needs Microsoft, Microsoft Visual C++ and whatever, right? Now you click, you from here you need to execute, you will run individually all of them to download those components needed. So if you've never installed before, you might encounter this kind of screen that asks you to install and execute install uh, all of these things. So it's okay to say uh, to carry on to install them. <coughs> so once each of them are completed, just need to click close, and it will continue to download 
until all the ticks on the right hand side are all checked. Hmm? Don't need to take them. It will just do its own. Yeah. So like in this case, you notice it's downloading all the stuff that it needs. Okay, so I just let it do its thing. Okay, notice that uh, the status, right, you have, I have uh, INSTL done. So install done, install done, install done, but I have two items which is manual. Manual means I need to download and install myself. Like, for example, in this case, because this is a new PC image I'm using, it doesn't have Python installed. So the connector will not install until I have the Python installed. So whatever that is not checked here, no green tick, right, it will not install until you've done the manual process. So let's say I let it be, because if you have already in the corner, you would have at least a Python installed. So it will check this option by itself. So now I click next to continue. Now it will ask you, oh, one or more have not been satisfied. Like this two right, do you want to continue? So for me, yes, I can do it later. So I'll click yes. So this will show, this screen shows you the software is going to install. Okay, so this is the option when you choose the 400 megabyte uh, package to download because it kind of everything there already. So I just click execute to run them. Now there's something obviously here that you don't really may not really need. Okay, like um, MSL for Visual Studio, because you're not doing Visual Studio, so you don't, you don't need that. Uh, ODBC you may not need it. C plus plus you may not need it. J you don't need, you don't need it as well. But generally it's okay to just leave them there. Uh, so I can execute. So when you're doing execute, you run each of them individually to install into your system. <coughs> Then I show you how it is. Okay, so I can just close the window. Okay, mm -hmm. Then you mm -hmm. just launch a workbench and stay here first. The See, this one you have, right? This one is for. No, I didn't. This one. Oh, try to do this one. See them going. Because normally when you do work in the same oh, when, I, when, I do the, when I download the workbench, it just taught me this one. I don't know what it is. Okay, then you so try to see. Click, click going. You, you ask your password, right? Then key in the password you key in just now. Oh, okay. You must remember the password. Right? If you forget the password, you must do, I'll restart the voting. It's not so easy to recover back. Save. Save report, yeah. Oh, so you show my Yeah, just like my screen. Okay, then here I will go through and go how to navigate around. Okay, thanks. Thank you. 
Oh, so you can run both. Huh? Who has managed to install the server and, and workbench? So who have both things, server and workbench? Both, right? Okay. Now, if you think you have both, let me fast forward. Huh? Okay, so if you have both, um, how do you know you have both, right? So if you think you, you're not sure whether you have it or not, like you've got the virus or not. Right? Okay, so if you're Windows users, you're not sure whether you got your MISCAM installed or it's a service. So what happens if MISCAM server you install as a service? Means you will forever be running your Windows until one finally you uninstall it in the background. So how do you know it's there, right? When you go to Windows, uh, type on the, open the search bar, okay, type this thing called services. Okay, now you want to find out whether it's there or not, okay? So, look for this icon, so this app called services, okay, click into it. So, inside the services, um, can scroll down, look for MySQL, or actually type, just press M to skip the, the, go to all the M services, okay. So MSQL installs itself as a service in Windows. Scroll down, you can see that here. So if you find this guy called MSQL 8.0 or something like that, that means it's installed. Okay, is it running? Look at the status. Running means it's alive. Okay, so that's checkpoint one. So now you can actually use Workbench to access it. Do you remember the password you keyed in when you installed? If you've forgotten your password, you need to uninstall <laughs> Or reconfigure. Okay, maybe not install, but reconfigure. Check, check, remember, remember uh, uh, which part? Oh, okay. We shall see. Now launch your workbench. So if you look for this icon or type in your Windows search MSL workbench, you should see this. Okay, launch it. Now, the first time you launch this, like my, okay, unlike my version, I got a lot of boxes there. Likely you have one box or no box there. Who have one box there? Okay. The one box says MSQL 8, the root, local host, right? Something like that. Yeah. Click on the box. Are you prompted the password? No. Okay, that means that you remember the password for you. Yeah. Okay. Those who are prompted the password, please key your password and check on the box that says store the password in box. If you forget your password one fine day and it asks you for password again, you will need to reconfigure your server. Or the words uninstall, install again. Yeah, please do not forget the password. So if you have successfully entered the box, you should get a screen like this. I think some of you get this screen instead. Okay, so this screen that you get the first time right on the left hand side, this is called a navigator. The navigator has two tabs. The tab is below, okay, the switching toggle tab. The first tab you get when you first time come in the navigator shows you more like the status of the server. Like click on server status, it shows you how much memory is using, um, since when, what version, okay. So the thing that you're more interested in really isn't the management part, but on the schemas here. Okay, so tap on the click on the schema tab below, it will show you what databases you have. So if this is the first time you have installed it, you will not see any databases except for one thing called system, SYS, correct? So in order to create a first database schema, click on this icon on the top left. So this creates a new SQL tab for executing queries. So click that, you get this notepad kind of a space, okay, with the familiar uh, lightning icon to execute. So here, please create your first database schema. Do you know how to do that? Create database. Name of database. Okay, of course not. Cannot be name question mark. Yes. Not supported.
Now, coming back to those who have not finished installation. <coughs> if you are installing MSQL and you arrive at this screen that everything has been installed, your journey is not over yet, you need to click on Next. Okay? So, this point in time, if you are at this screen, it just says that you installed the server but not configure it. Okay, your server is not actually alive yet. So it's like giving birth to after that you need to name the baby. So click next chat. After this, it will ask you for some options. Example, high availability and whatever. Okay. So what you want to install is the first option, standalone MISL server. You're not installing a cluster because you're not doing the some complicated stuff. So just use standalone. Click on the standalone server and choose next. Now it will ask you type and networking. So configuration type. Development computer, which is exactly the situation. You are using it for testing and development. Leave the options here untouched. Don't change anything. Okay? Click next. Authentication method. If you use the first option or keep to the first option of a use a strong password, you will need to enter a fairly complicated password. Example, must have one uppercase, one lowercase, one number, and one symbol. Now, if you want to make your life simpler, because you're doing a local, you can choose the second option, legacy authentication method. In the legacy authentication method, you can key in a, a four-letter password like one, two, three, four, it will still work. So you can make your life simpler by doing in the second option because you're not actually going to connect to, uh, you're not setting up your server for or your PC for some enterprise real work. Uh, okay? So the security doesn't really matter that much. Click next. Now, it will ask you for the password. So when you install MSQL, you will default create a super user called the root. The super user can do everything like God. So here you need to enter a password. If you chose the first one, strong legacy password, you need to key in a very complicated password. If you chose the second one, a second option, which is a legacy password, you can even key in four zeros. It will work. And then click next. Yes, it complains your password is weak, but it's okay. As long as you don't do this on the a real system for your company or organization. Now, Windows Service, it will automatically configure your server as a service, which I showed you earlier, identified by the service name here. Do not need to change this. And click Next. So here, it will tell you what it's going to do. Just click Execute. It will run each of the items until you get green, green ticks across. <clears throat> Sometimes this will come out to tell you something's changed. And uh, wait. So at the end of this uh, process of applying the configuration, your MISQL server service will be running in your Windows computer. And you can then use your workbench to access it. Successful. Click finish. OK. If you encounter the router thing, just click finish. Don't really need to care about that thing. Okay, connect to server. Click check and X. Okay, this is happening because of the router uh, component that you saw. By the way, the router component is not a big deal, so you will, you will not actually touch it anyway. And finally, finish next. Okay. So when you at the end of this process, it will ask you to start workbench and start the shell. Okay. What is the workbench and shell? The workbench is what I was showing you. Nice UI. Okay. Everything is there, easy to use. So far. The shell itself. What is this shell? The shell I will show you when I click finish is a command prompt. A lot like your inner corner prompt or your Windows command prompt. The shell is an alternative way of accessing MISQL. You can type the same commands here. Or such. Yeah. So the shell is just another way of interacting with your database uh, through command lines. Not the, e not the most user-friendly way of doing it, but it works. Okay. So I will want you to focus on the workbench because it provides a more user-friendly interface. So in default, the workbench will appear with this box. 
So what about what it does is it will scan your system for a running MySQL service. If it's successful, it will put the box here. Click on the box to enter your database server. It will ask you for password again. If you want to save your password in the box and do not think about remembering it again, check the box. Yeah. So when you do that, it will not ask you for password. Now you are in <laughs> the manage the Azure Workbench. So as I mentioned before, first time you come in, the, the navigator shows you the management tab, not the not interest, go to the schemas. So because if depending on what you chose, the example if you included the examples, you will have two additional databases called Sakila and Wo. Uh, you can de definitely play around with these two because it's all example and demo. You can mess around with it, delete it, change it, it will not cheat your system. Just don't touch anything inside sys. Okay? Because right now you're logged in as a root user, you can you can shoot yourself in the foot by touching things inside here. Okay? So to get down to business, <clears throat> this tab here is called the query tab. Allows you to type in your SQL command, click on this to run to run it. Now if someone passes you a dot SQL file, okay, we call it a script file, you can open it here through the second icon. Open the SQL script file into the tab. So if some of you did a script, you want to share it with your, your classmate, you can send them the SQL file. Uh, so let's say you did something here, you want to save it, right? So I want to create a database and I name it to be <coughs> infections. Okay, then I run it, okay? Now, after running it, you refresh the schema to find your infections database. Okay, so maybe now I want to do a great table called patients. Okay, so in the creation of table, you need to define the columns ID. Now, upper lowercase here in the column name and table names, I think it matters, so please be careful. Integer, not now, primary key. Okay, so this is like the standard mantra when you create a primary key column. Like the standard options you put in. Not now, primary key auto increment. Okay, now followed by other columns. So for the sake of remember these few simple text, integer, bar char, whatever you like to define in here is the length of the characters you will store. Okay? If you forget a lot of things, please don't remember don't forget this part. At least you can respectively create a basic table. And then finally, to finish your menu of table options, the uh, date time version, date time uh, data type, which is a timestamp. So here will be maybe I'll put date registered timestamp. Basic table. Okay, this particular tab, I have two commands. One is to create a database, the other is to create a table. Now, if you attempt to click on the yellow lightning icon to execute everything in this tab, you will get an error because this already exists. Okay, cannot create. So, how do you run just this line? Okay, very simple. Highlight the lines that you want to run. Okay, and then click the lightning icon. The lightning icon here, if not, nothing is highlighted, you will run everything in the tab. If something is highlighted, you will run whatever you highlighted. So now you have your first table. Refresh the schema, you will see that you have a patient's table now. With the columns you define. So under the open bracket, you should enter all the the tab is not needed. Now. The tab is purely for formatting. We like to indent stuff so we can see some of that. So four base uh, three basic type of data, three basic data types you have to remember. Integer, bar chart, timestamp. Okay? 
上个礼拜，所以我才有人人聊的时候。<coughs> so now let's do some practice, right? Since you create a table, let's insert some data. So based on the slides in the PowerPoint, insert into. Of course, I didn't follow the number in the PowerPoint. Uh. So because we create a table for patients, you're going to insert some values into patients. Okay. So. Here you should probably recall that since ID is a auto increment primary key, you do not need to specify the value, but you need to specify for the rest because there is no default value specified here. First name, last name, last timestamp. Okay. Sequentially following in the order of the fields you define the respective values. <coughs> now take note for the date registered. Timestamp values. You may key in <clears throat> this is universal or ISO standard format. So this is one of the standard formats that MISCL will recognize if you key it in string. <coughs> Today's date. Uh, sorry, not child. Eight. I think so. Executed. Oops. A known column copy. Oh, sorry. Please, uh, if it's a text value, please use the <coughs> straight looking quote, single quote, not the standard one. You see the color highlighting is different. So if you're able to insert the row, then your the output below it should be a green tick and tells you that one row affected. <clears> okay. <throat> Since you inserted the data, now let's try to retrieve it by using the select statement. So select every row, every column from the patient table. In fact, because we only have one row, just select everything from there. Don't need to specify any conditions, just choose it. If you run this command, you will get a pop-up of the table format of your data, which is like when you print your data frame. Okay. And if you are successful in setting the data, you should see exactly what you put in. <clears throat> if you are completely step, next one to try is to do an update. So let's try to change the name of the patient. So then update patient set. So what we want to set is the first name. To a new value. Okay. Highlight the command and execute it. So, oh, patience. Ah, okay. You need to specify the where column also. Where ID is equal to one. Otherwise, you will try to update everything. Now, if you didn't specify the where uh, command here, the workbench will warn you. In fact, it will stop you stop the command from running because it's not a safe update. So please specify the the where condition ID is equal to one, which is the ID of your patient, and then run this. Okay, 
Now, if you want to see the effect of your last query, highlight line child, which is here, select some operation to see everything. Execute it. You see what your update has done. Okay, so the effect of update. Now, the final data manipulation. Remove, delete. So remove the one and only patient. So write the command to remove the patient where ID is equal one. So remember when you're doing update and delete, you must specify a condition. So you're only affecting one row. If you do not, the mechanism in my MS Server Bench actually prevents you from running it. Because it's not a safe uh, update. So once I've deleted it, highlight the select star from patients to see the effect. Now if you try to choose a star from patients or retrieve all the rows, you'll notice that nothing is there. So you should be just seeing the column take the column names and no data. Okay. <clears throat> right. Come in the slide. Okay. I get to cover this thing called joints. Do you remember your Join, join data frame. Pandas. So pandas has a function to join data frames, right? Okay. And then you join by matching a common column and you specify the left, right, or yeah. So the intersection. Okay, so the same concept of joining applies here. When you're joining two tables, it's like joining two data frames. You need to have a common column. So to make the join happen here, you need to create one more, I need to create one more uh, table. So let's say my first table is patients, okay? Patient ID or that. Have you heard of this term called contact tracing? You know the latest Wuhan virus, how do they find out that so many other people have the virus or suspected? So let's say, example, if let's say I have a carrier virus, I travel, I come to this classroom, I teach you all, and you all get it from me, okay? Contact tracing happens when CDC asks me who have I been in contact with. Okay, so based on that question, I say, oh, my students in I in SP. Then immediately they ask me for the list of student details for SP or ask for school. And they'll come to every one of you and ask for you to be quality or checked. This is contact tracing. So in contact tracing, if I have one single person, I need to have a list of contacts I come I come across. So let's say I have a so let's say if you're the data analyst doing the contact tracing, you probably have two tables. One is the main the main patient, and then another table would be the contacts or suspects. So right now I'm going to create one more table, which will house the data the data storage of these people that the patient has contact with. So I make this as simple as possible so it's easier to make up. So yep, my the regular mantra, ID, everything is ID. But now I mean key auto increments. Okay. So create another table that has somewhat similar to the patients, okay? But the key difference is it has a column called patient ID. Then run it. Okay. So the idea here is every patient will be linked to some records in the context table. So between these two tables, there's a common column, which is the patient ID, the ID in patient table, and the patient ID in the context table. 
So if let's say I start to gather people that this patient is in contact with and I want to do a join or some sort, right? You want to put the two information together. So what we'll do is we do a join. So let's say my objective is I want a single table format whereby I have the patient name here as well as the context on the other side. So let me put some data inside the context. Let me put the person in again. ID2, right? So, okay, I don't want to run this statement multiple times, so in order for me to put multiple data in, This one, so, okay. Now I'm gonna do a select star from context to check my table. Okay, so I'm gonna create another tab. So I'm gonna do a join uh, context to patients. Joining the process of combining information, table information together. So typically when I do a select from, you need to, to join, okay, you start from a selection statement. So I'm going to select from a table and say I join this with something else. So say I'm going to select from the patient's table. Now how many, there are a few joins that you can actually use. Basic join here will be, okay. So this is the first join method here. If you select individual columns and then from two tables where the column matches so try that out right so this is my first table column so I want to choose the patient's name followed by the context table maybe first name as well from patients and contacts okay. where patients dot ID go to text dot patient ID okay. so selection what I'm, what I'm projecting from the combination of the two tables is the first name from the patient first name from context from patient context so the where condition here right is to define how the table is joined. So because I have a matching ID in patient's table to the patient ID column in context table, I use that as a common uh, column. So I run this. So what the output is, what I get is, the first name here comes from the original patient name, but the first name here comes from all the context names. You can also try that if what happens if I take away the projection of two columns and just put a star there. Okay. So when I do this is to choose is to put both tables fixed side by side, matching based on the ID of the patient ID from here and the patient ID from the other table. 
So you can see that actually these three, these four columns here come from the patient's table, while these four columns here come from the contact table. So this is one of the joints. Another way of joining is using the specific a join uh, keyword. So when you use a join keyword, you also need to combine with the on keyword to say what are you joining on. Maybe I do something else for this example before I go on. Okay. What if so coming back to here, we better this. What if I change the where condition to something else? What if I mess up the ID here to match with the context ID instead? So what do you think will happen if I do this? So if you match, you match the ID differently. So patients dot ID value two, where you only match with the context ID value two, and the result is only one row. So this is like just this join is basically intersection of the two. So if you put the wrong condition here, that means you're matching the wrong column, right? You may get a lesser of the, of the result. So normally this column needs to be like the common relationship column. So I'm gonna try another the next one which is the using the join keyword. So if I say I want to retrieve everything from patients join contacts on similar to the earlier statement actually so it's quite similar to this instead of using where I'm using the on, on keyword So when using a join and on based on the common column, right, it will be the same result as you did previously with a select two tables where the same column is uh, equal. Same result here. Okay. Now if I were to let me run this again. Yeah. So this is the, this two are the same result. So this is two ways of joining. One is you don't use a join keyword. You, you another one you use a join keyword. As long as there's a common column, you can relate the two tables together. So I'm going to create a bit of uh, this one. I mean, make a bit of difference here. So let me add one more, one more patient. <coughs> so I got two patients here. Okay. And add some more contacts. So I got two different patients and two different set of contacts. So I run this. So now I'm going to show you that if you have two different patients and two different contacts, right, when you merge and join tables, right, you will get, so you see that for the Abing here, he gets all the contacts that's linked to him. And for the Gary, he gets all the contacts, contacts that's linked to him. So it's using the join. Now when you join, you can also couple it with a web statement. So if you want to join table plus a condition criteria, you can also combine it. So let's say you specifically only want Gary, right? So you can say patients.id is equal to 3. So this only this join only gave me the patient and that one. It did everything.
So these are the list of the other joints. So a uh, very nice Venn diagram of the different type of joints and what they mean. So left joint, right joint, and inner joint. Same as when you say the um, when you do the other frame, right? You specify left which parameter is the main one, right which is the main one. The inner joint is always the intersection. Full outer joint basically is just a union. Uh, so union is like here. Okay. Okay, uh, finally, something very important. How to access your database with Python code? CA2. <coughs> CA2. <coughs> CA2 requirement. You must <coughs> access data, then later save the data. I think I have to do on the e continue on e-learning. <laughs> okay, well, <coughs> first thing is you need to run this command to install the connector for into Python. Okay. So I me run the Conda version, second second command line. So I on turn on my I launch my Anaconda prompt. Install my SQL connector. Python. <coughs> So to do a search for Anaconda or just type A and A then you can set this Anaconda prompt. Right? So you did before yet. Yeah. Okay. So click launch the app. Okay, then run the command called conda install MYSQL connector pattern. So if everything falls into place, you should get this final uh, message. New packages installed will be restored. Yes. Press Y, enter, and then you install. <coughs> okay. So in your assignment, <coughs> okay. The reason why you need to learn SQL is because you will need to use this command inside here in Python. So in your assignment, right, you need at least one of them, right? Yeah. Okay. So one of your data chosen data set, the chosen one, the beginning of the data set, you need to create a database. Okay, so how should we? If you if you are doing this, I will maybe create a database, read the CSV, send it into the table, and then read it from there to do the transformation. After transform, I create another table, send the transform data back. Huh? Okay. <laughs> <coughs> <clears throat> so since you have your database installed already, right? Minimally, and if you created the sample table just now with some data, you can try some of this. Okay, I very shamelessly press press Y and press Enter. Nothing happened. Ah. Huh? This stage, huh? press Y then. Oh, run the video. Yeah. Oh, the first one cannot happen. You keep this and the other other command. Okay, so we should only run the corner. Corner is okay. Running. Yeah. It might take some time though. It's so long. Uh. 
Then when I run right, there's a lot of value. So, is there anything wrong? Because when I, when I put oh, because when, just now you run, you run this already. Yes. First time you run already, right? Yes, yes. You run, you, so you don't select anything, you click already, you run everything. So because you run the first line, you just select the new, select the new lines, then you run. But there's no error. Patient ID. Because I, 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 I realize that if I break it, it will right, often discover is it something wrong. That's correct. Okay, so the bracket, can, can, can you go do without bare bracket and bracket? The bracket ah? No, I mean the, the inverted commas. Try to have the inverted commas. This bracket is a bare bracket. Because when it, this works out. <laughs> Yeah, that should work. Still work here. Zero check. Yeah, I need it. Yeah, all the way. Oh, so that's a error. Eh. That's a error. Okay. That's one problem. Second is an error. Okay. Yes. How many of you have the same problem running the MYSQL? Sorry. MYSQL command. Cannot run up. Who can run? Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. <coughs> <laughs> Who has problem running the create statement? Sorry. <coughs> create database. This one. I, I can create, but I not Create database, create table. <laughs> oh, that cannot. I cannot. I cannot insert them. The table also. Oh. Who can run this one? Oh, sorry. Who cannot run this? What's the what's the error again? Syntax error. Is it complaint? You got same errors. Why is this the same? No, 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 no. But now you have to install. Okay, you press Y. Yeah, you press Y. Because now you should put it on the Y. 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 Y.
the ID, I think, hey, wait, the ID should. You should be the other one. Eh? The, sta the standard one. The standard code. This one. This one. This one. Oh, yeah. so it should be it should the infectious as long as it's a table name, column name, schema name, right? You need to use the this uh, this special code. Oh, not the okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So if you want, highlight the second one, right? Just highlight the second one. Please take note that if you have an SQL error, right? Table name, column name, schema name, must use this standard code. The one that's above the tab key, below the escape key. No, you need to highlight, highlight the highlight text. So you need to literally highlight. Insert into the table name must be the. Also must be the yes. one above tab. As long as you're referring your table name, column name, you must use that special uh, code character. Okay, because nothing is nothing is uh is, so nothing is selected, right? You need to double either double click on the schema so that it's both being selected. Oh, okay. Or alternatively you here you can type use or use uh, infectious. Yes, the table name. Like that. So when you run it you might run together. But actually if you double click here it's going to Okay, so two, two methods, right? Yeah. Must the database name also use that? Yes, database, uh, database name, name, table name, column name. Oh. This reading must use, try to use that code to serve to cancel it. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Then you refresh here, uh, refresh. Oh, okay. Because okay. okay. yeah. it don't automatically refresh. Then see, yeah, click, the, click the arrow to expand the table. Oh, you see that. So the first arrow is the special uh, thing. Yeah. Okay, please take note if you're referring to schema name, table name, column name, right? You try to keep to that standard code. Okay. <laughs> column names also. Otherwise the otherwise you have to recognize syntax. Okay, that's in the slides they don't use the code because it's a shorthand method. The problem with shorthand method is that if your column name is the same as uh, one of the keywords in the system, in your system, it will come up with an error. Okay, so using the code is a safe is a safe uh, Because it's already, is this already? So you need to highlight the text. So you highlight, just do a highlight like this. Okay, but first what is you you refresh the schema here. Yeah. Then double click to select it. Oh. Oops. <laughs> Hold on, let me restart my machine. Oh, yeah, shucks. The normal code. Normal code. The one which is next to the enter key. Yeah, so this will be the normal code, then that will be the standard one. So. Okay, so you need to double click to select it. So then you can do a create table. So I just run. Uh, highlight the create table and then run. Okay, then you refresh here again to see a table. You can right click refresh. Yeah, then you can click on the arrow expand. You can see a table is there now. Now you can highlight this one that you set values to run. How can I see the table? Okay. 
you can write it down. You can see the so expand the column and see the details. Okay. Uh, the code they use should be this one. Yeah, not the straight one. The straight one is the one here, right? Yes. We should use this code for table name, schema name, and column name. So I change the, the, yes. the, 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 the code. code. Only the values you use the normal code. Oh, table name? Yes. Okay. But here, application no key doesn't matter. Uh, no, <laughs> the keyword for each other. Oh, can I insert right? Yeah, no, I all the all the forbade come out already. Oh, Everyone. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, so when uh, I put the insert, I, I okay, so this is my my, my label happy. So okay. um I insert it to happy with the first name. No, so you cannot have the subject then then have what? So between so the the complete statement is from here, mm -hmm. line eight to line eleven. Yeah, so this whole thing then and then it's every column. Now you highlight this whole thing. Highlight line eight to eleven. Uh -huh. Are there other than that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my preparing transaction. Oh, what are you doing? I'm using my root account. So, so I don't understand why. Windows account. My Windows account is my root account. Like like I mean account. Account, right? Yes. <laughs> you say the current user cannot be shared. Oh, okay. Close the close at the kernel prompt. Okay. So we launch under kernel prompt as administrator. We launch. Yeah, we launch and run, run the command. Then you should Yeah, you highlight, then you execute. Click this instead of this, Yes, yes, yes. Ah, no, no, this one. So we run the highlight statement. Right? Yeah. 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 Unknown column, date registered. Is it date registered? It's a bit. Is it correct? Spelling it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you expand the column? <laughs> 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 Maybe earlier when you do, you didn't, you didn't have the answer. Then what should I do? Should okay. I delete this one now? You can delete it. You can right click, right click on patients, then delete, drop table. Ah, oh. uh, then drop now. Okay, now you run the table again. Then we don't need to create the database anymore. No need, because the database is there already. Then when do we use this cursor and when do we use this cursor? This one is when you run the line. Oh. But because so you may speak is. multiple lines, right, you highlight and run the one. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I will send out. I'll send out the table creation script. Yeah. You gotta save this script, right? Yeah. There's a save script. Then it asks you location to save. Yeah. So just choose where you wanna save it. Lah. Let's say I save it in my documents, right? Then give a name on it. So maybe it's. Then click save. So it will save as a dot SQL file. This is how it appear. Continue. Okay. <laughs> okay. Continue. Ah. Uh. You need to run this. Okay. So from the side, right? Simplest way to copy this code here. Copy the code. Just copy it first. Go to your Jupyter notebook. 
paste it in okay take note when you paste over right you see this red dot here right those are like the tabs up just clear away the red dot and make sure it's a new line okay in a, in a proper proper tabs okay then change the pass okay so this here right okay how do you read this user root don't need to change second one is password change to the password you use okay or whatever host don't need to change keep it db so say you just created the infectious database use that database to test the connection okay so uh, sorry, yeah, this is my password. Uh. Your password, put your password, put your password. Last one, right, is the database you want to connect to. So if you created, so let's say for example, my site, I created this Wuhan database, right? Then I will write here Wuhan virus, uh, the name of the schema. So if you use infectious, you use whatever name of schema you have created, put into the last parameter, the last variable, db. Okay. Okay. Now, remove this query for creating database. Actually, okay. If you try, if you okay, if you keep this thing here, If you keep this thing here and just run it, say you don't change anything else. Just change your password and the DB and run this Jupyter notebook. What will happen is that if everything works, you will see your new database called my database appear in your MI scale. It's not you have error. Huh? So I just changed my password 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 and the my username lah. I mean sorry, my password, password and db. I run the whole notebook as it is right from the from the PowerPoint. So if it's successful, you'll say this. No errors, right? Now I want to verify. Go to MIC Bench, refresh the schema, and you can see my database appear there. That's all you need to do to make sure that your Python can talk to your database. If you get this working, everything else you do should work. Go back to where? This infection, I just use. Uh, the that one doesn't matter. Here, right? Yeah, actually, that one doesn't matter. Because what you will do is, you, it actually, for this one, it doesn't matter the DB. So, because the command here, right, will create the database, right? This last one doesn't matter. As long as it exists. You got a cipher error. Can you? Access your information. <clears throat> okay. Okay, can go back already. <laughs> we need the e-learning to continue. Yeah. Monday, yeah. I will find out. Okay, some of you, if you have encountered an SSL. Wow, <laughs> SSL error, right? SSL error. So we got. Okay, some of you might encounter this thing. Python MIS your SSL error. <clears throat> yeah, go home. <laughs> no, I will send out the solution for this one. You okay to solve the SSL error number either no, solution number one, create a self signed cert. Sorry, it's another kind of words of your <laughs> Option number two, go to MISGL, I will give you a set to disable the SSL checking. 
<laughs> also, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Choose your poison. Nah. First poison is more tedious. Second poison, not so bad. Okay, but in the actual environment, right, you have no choice but to do the first poison. Okay, because MISQL will by default force you to connect in a secure manner. Okay, it's, it's because nowadays the modern SQL is like that. Okay, so because you must connect in a secure manner, that's why this thing about self signed certificate comes up. A self signed certificate or a provision certificate is a SSL cert that someone gives you to install your laptop to ensure that your laptop is or machine is an authenticated user to access resources in your company. In this case, even within itself, it forces it forces that kind of policy. Okay, so unless you purposely can turn off the option in MISQL server, you know, toggle, turn it off, then you will not come across the issue. Or you make yourself a self sensor which actually is more steps. Uh. So I will I will send out the instruction on disabling the MICL SSL checking. It's so easier. Huh? Uh, yeah, also teach you the our I'll record the option uh, the first two of the two options, how to create a self sign set, uh, and also how to disable the SSL checking for your server. So Yes. Uh, so only your network. My one guy disabled it before. Yeah, because it's Yeah. Uh, so common and Correct. Normally, okay. So I forgot that. Uh, I forgot my one I disabled it before. Okay. Sorry for keeping you all very late. So, yeah, I'll send out the. Patch. Just, just. Disabling it is the easiest. Uh. Yeah, but if given in an actual working environment, I don't think your DB and me will disable it for you. Because it will compromise everything else. <laughs> okay, so, but anyway, if you are in an actual working environment, right, and this happens to you, your IT will need to give you the certificate. Or, number two, your corporate. PC is pre-set up with the certificates already under the Active Directory or whatever method they have. So whatever you do should be okay. Normally. So this is something that your IT in the company will do for you, not that you only do it yourself. Uh self sign are free. Self sign certificates are free, but not secure. Company one they actually will buy. They will buy and they will set up a certificate. Then the issue is built into your laptop already. When they give you issue, company issue laptop. For you, if you're using your company laptop to do this, right? You can you should you will get around by creating your own self 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 sign set. Okay, self sign is like you know if you the face like own self check own self, right? <laughs> yeah, but because your MSL is on your own machine, it's okay. But if let's say you're accessing your company's uh database server. And they have this called checking, right? Then you cannot use a self sign cert. Yeah. Uh, because it's your own resources, uh, within your, it's your own sandbox. Uh. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, I think so. We'll extend a bit. Uh. Really? Uh. I'll extend. <laughs> no la, you're supposed to do CA one. I tell you what, CA one, take CA one, remove all the NumPy, convert the pandas, then take choose one of them, do a read database, store database. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can I? not see star. I just get pen die. Right? <laughs>